So we just got alligator gar fry. They were spawned in May by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service at their hatchery in Tupelo, Mississippi, uh, using wild adults. The reason we're introducing it is that it's a species that occurred here naturally, and it may actually be extirpated from the state, meaning that populations may no longer exist here. This is about 14,000 fry in these four boxes. This batch we're going to rear indoors. They'll be getting zooplankton, brine shrimp, and high-tech art artificial feed. They live in swamps, oxbows, sloughs, uh, embayments of large rivers that, that flood seasonally, and a lot of those habitats are disappearing. He cooled them down some so that you could ship more to a box. So that one's 62 degrees. Putting 70 degree water on the 60 degree water bags to, to slowly start warming them up. It's a large species, making it vulnerable to overfishing. It's long lived, it's slow to reach uh, maturity. So, you know, females uh, reach maturity at, I've seen cited 11 years, males mature at six years. So, you know, it takes some time for them to grow up to that size where they're capable of reproduction. So the next step will be getting them used to our water, not just the temperature, but the water quality. They're a predator, so they're one of the natural checks for a lot of the forage species in, in th that part of the state, you know, where they formerly occurred. So these have done what they call swim up. They've lost basically all their yolk sac and are ready to feed now. That's why they're up on the surface and swimming free. The food items include mostly fish, but they also have been found to, to be scavengers to some extent. And Unlike some of the other gars we have, we have uh, three other species of gar, the long-nosed gar, spotted gar, and short-nosed gar. And they're mostly topwater predators, so they, they lurch just beneath the surface and they, they take fish that, that swim up in the water column. However, the alligator gar has been, it's been found to, to feed on bit more benthic or bottom-dwelling species. We'll give them zooplankton four times a day and have these automatic feeders that are offering a powder of semi-moist uh, salmon starter. It's every 15 minutes. Like other fish species, these things grow fairly quickly early on. Like in the hatchery, they'll, they'll grow really fast up to a certain size. So we've had them eight weeks, and some of them are already 14 inches. That's phenomenal growth. It will slow down at some point when they hit about two feet. And I think the record was somewhere around 10 feet and 350 pounds. Mostly what's been reported now is six to seven feet and, you know, 150 pounds. These will have to be size sorted probably every week or two because they'll, they'll eat each other. Even all the way up to 12 inches, they're eating each other. And they're also kind of territorial so they can't be very dense. We're tagging two groups of fish, uh, some seven to nine inch pelt reared fish, and then we're tagging all the men are reared ones today. We have to separate them with graders, kind of like colanders, to get them away from the minnows. They're putting in a, in a tank with just the gar, and a divider so that each fish can be picked up. It's anesthetized and then the micro wire is injected. It's, it's a machine that's got a, a needle like thing and, and, and injects a 2.2 millimeter wire and cuts it off. You can detect that wire with a wand like at the airport. So later when the biologists catch an alligator gar anywhere, uh, they can use the wand to determine if it's a hatchery fish. 10 years, 20 years down the road, if fish start showing up without marks, then we know that 
uh, they are spawning in the wild again. We're out here standing on a bridge out here in western Kentucky. Cars going by. Mm -hmm. What in the world's going on? Well, we're, uh, we're, we're starting our second stocking of the uh, alligator gar in western Kentucky. What we're stocking are fish about this size, and it looks a lot like, you know, a spotted gar. They're going to go directly from this truck into, into this creek, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll go several sites. How many sites are we going to stock today? Today we're just stocking two sites. Now, the first time we stocked them, we stocked, I think, it was between eight and ten, something like that, all along um, the Ohio and the, the Mississippi River. So. Now, how, how long will this uh, stocking pro program continue? It's going to be based some on, on our sampling. We're going to come back to some of these sites and, and sample them um, next year and then the following years and, and see what we see, and we'll probably uh, adjust our plans based on, on how they're doing. Today we are here at Minor E. Clark Fish Hatchery for an exciting day with alligator gar. Yeah. a telemetry study. We have contracted Murray State and today we will be surgically implanting the transmitters. We'll have somebody down there net the fish out, put it in the knockout tank that has MS222 to, to anesthetize the fish. Once the fish is, is anesthetized, Baker will pick it up, he'll weigh it first, then when he's done we'll come over here, we'll measure it, then he'll wrap the towel around his head and then at that point, he's going to hold on to the head, and then Stephanie is going to go ahead and start doing work. First thing, I'm going to take some betadine and clean the area. My goal with the scalpel is just to get up under one of the scales. Now that I'm under, I'm going to take the scissors. I made that hole, and I don't want to go down or up. I just want to go across. These are the transmitters that we'll be using to insert inside of the alligator gar. On the left side, you'll see the magnet, and once the magnet's pulled off, it will activate the battery, and the battery life will start. The battery life on the transmitters is roughly 18 months. Now that we've got it inside, we're going to close this fish back up. Now that the sutures are in, blot okay. the area dry again. <clears throat> then I'm going to get super glue all over this guy. That's your watertight barrier. So now we'll put a microwire tag in the fish and it'll be put in the water to recover. We've got a hydrophone that will travel up and down the Clarks River and we'll track them with the hydrophones and each fish has a different um, number that goes with the tracker. There's 20 of them total. Uh, there's also on top of that, in case we can't find one, we've got 10 of the setups at the end of the Clarks River, at the mouth of the Clarks River, into the Tennessee River and the Ohio River to see if they leave the habitat and we lose the fish. By doing this project with Murray State, we hope to gather as much information on how the species is reacting to the environment within the state of Kentucky. We are going to see uh, if they have any different food habits, where they're moving, where they like to reside, do they like deep water, shallow water, things of that nature which will help us to determine future stocking sites, future locations, and the success of this project. Mm -hmm.